Now some of you might not know this, but my wife Irina, cute picture, pretty hot, is an interior designer by profession. And one thing she can never get enough of, besides this hunk of hunk, is floating shelves. She has them all over the place. Shelves, shelves, they're all over. Shelves, 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 shelves. And now she wants another place that wants shelves. And you know what? I'm gonna give it to her. So in this area, we're gonna put some built-in shelves. Built-in shelves are super easy to do and I'll show you how to do it. Let's go to the shop. So I'm using a uh, three quarter inch maple plywood. Why am I using maple ply? It's specifically because maple and birch are some of the most easily accessible plywood at your local hardware store, number one. Number two, maple and birch have the least amount of imperfection. So when it comes to painting it or staining it, uh, it's gonna look uh, a lot more flawless than some of the other stuff you'll find at your hardware store. All right, folks, here's a fun trick for you. If you don't have one of those fancy little digital miter gauges, here's what you can do, 45 degrees right here. We got it set to 45. There we go, don't have to use that thing. That was a little sketch cutting that. And so I, I want you guys to be safe. If you don't have a nice sturdy table saw like that and a couple of jigs to hold it in like that, uh, I, I wouldn't attempt to do that narrow. So this is a two and a half inch piece. Be safe, go thicker. Get four inches. Get four inches will be safe enough for you to cut on a little contractor table saw. No problem. So just be safe, guys. Please. So I realized the inside parts that I cut, they're a little too wide based off the miter, so I end up going one inch or three quarter inch thick on this. So I'm gonna lay those out and, and I pre-drill these holes, that way it doesn't snap. So little, little things I did. Obviously it helps if you have a little laser level, mark out exactly where your studs are, and um, have fun. So that right there is just a reinforcing piece, mostly because how long this is. You know, the longer the floating shelves, the more over time this could sag here. So I just wanted to put a little reinforcing piece. That way it'll be sandwiched in down the middle. Now we're gonna do the face frame and uh, it's looking good. All right, here's a little face frame piece. Mitered 45, 45 should hook it perfectly. This space is exactly the thickness, three quarter inches right here. We're gonna add a little bit of wood glue. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> yeah. We collide, we All right, I'm gonna try installing the second shelf because of this awkward angle up here. I'm gonna try install it while I already assembled. So hopefully this goes smooth and not too stressful. But you never know. And if it is, whatever. Faces when we 
Well, as you have it, mistakes happen. It's just, mistakes happen to everybody. It's just how you're gonna deal with them. So as you can see, some of these corners are not fully occluded. They're sharp, they're rough. Um, this trick only works if these are nice, tight seams. So now here's the trick. You take a round shafted screwdriver and you lightly start blending everything in. And as you can see, it's already closing a lot of these gaps in. You don't want to do it too hard because you don't want to start breaking this plywood. Once you've got everything the way you want it in, what we're going to do next is take a little light sander or light sandpaper and then lightly brush it all in, creating a nice and smooth. Now, before I do that, I'm going to take a little bit of wood filler and dab up all these little brad nail holes and some of the exposed plywood here. And then that should get everything ready for stain. See, the sandpaper is already occluding everything. Like this, you can't even see the seam. Small places like that are gonna get a little dab of this. And that is how it's made. So probably not a good idea to hit the camera with the uh, lens with the sandpaper, so don't do that. I'll scratch it. Got a little tear out here. Threw a little glue on there, put the tape over it, and we're back in business. So if that happens to you, you can do the same. little trick if you can't get these corners with the uh, cutting knife because it's a little tricky you can just take it on your finger here and just filling it in there it actually works exceptionally well on these corners you just rub it in there once it dries we're just gonna use a very light uh, either 120 or 220 ideally 220 because you don't want to take too much of this stuff off to get it done this is gonna take forever I'm gonna go one step up 120 grit just lightly <laughs> And if you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, Alex, that's all fine and dandy, but I don't have the fancy table saw or the skills to try this on my own. And listen, here's what I'll tell you this. I can't tell you how many crappy shelves I built before I finally started figuring things out. Every project that I do, there's always something that I'm not satisfied with. And it's always just me who sees that one thing, not anybody else. But that encourages me to take that to the next project to make sure I nail that part right. So. This is probably my favorite or best work of the floating shelves with the uh, you know miters and stuff like that I've ever done because I've learned after screw ups. So embrace the suck, embrace the failures, and then get up and try again. M much better, so, so much better. <sighs> Flex your shoulders out. Be honest, do my shoulders look bigger? They feel bigger. <laughs> all we need now, everything's sanded, so all we need now is just the stain. <sighs> Let's see what we have here. Uh, Pre-stain, this is good stuff if you have pine. Uh, it keeps things from blotching up. Uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. Weathered oak, uh, that's usually my go-to pine as well. Um, you know what I did before, my wife really liked, there it is. Oh, uh, this one, fruit wood. It gives us this like antique -y look on uh, maple specifically. Um, let me see if I have an example. So here's a little trick you guys should look into. If you want to figure out what kind of stain you really like, this is a piece of maple, obviously what we're working with. That's why I usually build for shelves. And to help my wife figure out what kind of stain she likes, because it all reacts differently, is I made a little sample and I wrote the title of each stain. So we got walnut, we got uh, pickled oak, uh, weathered oak, that's what I just told you about. And here is fruit wood. So she really likes, uh, let me go double check. Hey, question for you. Um, I like this one. Still mm -hmm. fruit? Man, I knew it. Why? I knew it! Because I'm good at what I do. For the longest time ever, I was always applying stain using like a rag. And the problem, sorry about that. And the problem with that, it was the rag always gave you this inconsistent staining because you come out, it's super drenched, you put it down, so this would be the heaviest spot. And then by the time you got here, it would be worn out. So I found out that, besides it's messy, using a brush, a foam brush, at what, 80 cents foam brush, is the easiest way to do this. And the way I like to do it, brush it on along with the grain, let it soak in there. Usually these directions say let it soak for about two minutes and then wipe off any excess out. And that should be good. This is a good opportunity to remember I need a rag to wipe this stuff off. Oh, all this hard work. I need a sip of grandpa's old cough syrup. 
Just kidding. This is a clear coat. This is actually an interesting thing. Most of the time I shoot clear coat on some of these projects using a sprayer. But because this is built in, I don't want to get clear coat onto the walls. This is a rub on poly or a wipe on poly. That's actually better for marketing. Wipe on as opposed to rub on. Might hit different demographics. Anywho, uh, this is a wipe on polyurethane. It's It applies really easy. Just take a rag, put it on there, and uh, put coat after coat. Um, applies really well. I've used this in the past and uh, shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the stain is almost done drying, so we're gonna throw a few coats on there. That way when we put bottles on there or anything that has wetness on it, it won't start eating away at the stain and it'll be fine. Sure. And scratches as well. All right, so it's all dry. Really, there's different ways to apply it. Some people apply it right onto the rag, and I think there's also ways just just do that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel. What do I know? And the idea is you don't want to wipe it off completely. It's you just put it on until it's kind of wet. It's kind of like putting wax on on a car, except obviously liquid form. You want to have a residue staying on there. And then uh, followed by, and we'll do like three to four coats. All right, it's a moment of truth here, which I don't know why we're, there's a moment of truth. We already see the product, it's all dry. Yeah, this is great, this is really great. And just like that, we built built-in shelves out of plywood. How do we title this video? Like faux, faux, faux plywood, fake faux? Well, it's, it's not faux, because I don't know. Now, like one last thing I forgot to mention with you guys is anytime you're working with drywall, there's gonna be a variation in distances. Drywall's not perfect and the framers for sure are not perfect. And so here's what I mean. The distance from here to that corner is 54 and a half. Now the distance from here to here, which is only 16 inches deeper, is about 55 inches. A huge difference. So to prevent these gaps, I did Premeditatively cut the difference that are supposed to be to make sure it fits, but there's still these gaps. They're not big, they're very small, but this brings me to this opportunity because some of the stain got onto the drywall, so we're gonna have to paint it anyways. So the secret to make it look as flawless as possible with these shelves is take a little bit of a paintable caulk, go and push a bead going deep down into these crevices. A little bit goes a long way. Once it dries, then put your coat of paint over it and it's gonna look so good, it's gonna look so fitted, and that's kinda like what the pros all do anyway. Hey guys, check this out. How crazy good did that turn out? I couldn't be happy. Remember, it took me so many tries to get this right. I am gonna leave you guys with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The full renovation video should be done next Monday or Tuesday, so make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so already. I appreciate you guys watching this stuff. If you guys wanna check out the merch that we have here, Mr. Bill the Curtain Sweat, I'll put the links down in the description below. Do not be afraid to make a mess. It's just a better opportunity to learn. Tune out this week, we'll see you guys next week. See ya, bye. There we go, we got a hole. They're gonna look nice and nice. So you can look next, just single next. What's the worst you can have it? Love your house. Solving problems, that's what we're in the business for, solving problems. <laughs> Shut up, all right? We're just teaching people how to get started, and that is it.